or not. <laughs> but I've been I've been crazy busy and have not had nearly as much time as I, I would like to have to be able to do a few more of these video uh, vlogs. You all have been extremely patient and understanding, um, you know, asking for more, but saying, you know, that, that I'm kind of busy, which is, I appreciate that. Um, I've got a little bit of time now because I'm currently in Houston, Texas for uh, rehearsals of Maria Stuarda, and it has been a big learn for me. Uh, it is a daunting amazing role. I'm totally in love with her, um, but I have a lot of work to do left to to get it where I want it to be. Um, so I've been quite focused on that. But we've just finished staging today. Yay! Um, who knew it really doesn't turn out well for her in the end. Um, but it's, it's going really well, and I just feel uh, it's a really rich period for me. It's such a, a privilege to get to do a role like this. So um, I thought a couple of you have asked some really good questions and it ties in a bit with, with what I've been dealing with, so I thought it might be interesting to talk about that, and that's expression. Um, I want a wonderful uh, question from, thank you for telling me how to pronounce your name, Tuka Sapper. Um, he said it's like, took a nap. Um, so he says, how do you give so much meaning and attention to those daunting coloratura passages? As a young singer, sometimes coloratura just ends up feeling like a vocalese, and boy, isn't that the truth. Um, and then somebody else, Mega Freddy, uh, asks about how you find meaning in pieces that are sort of vague and, and hard to interpret. He cites Vivaldi as an example. Um, yeah, I hear you on that one, too. Um, this is a really tricky thing, because I am currently with this bad boy, Maria Stuarda, bad girl, but she's a good girl, but um, it's really the, the question that has been on my mind for the last year I've been, been studying the score, and you know, it's one of these pieces, like, for example, it's, it's, there's no Strauss in here, there's no Puccini, it's just, you look at the score, and it's mm, da, da, mm, da, da. everything, all the magic has to be created simply by the vocal line. This is the heart and soul of bel canto. But one of the things I like to do is I like to approach every piece that I'm doing as if it's bel canto, if it's um, relying solely on, on the voice and on the color of the voice and the way we use the text to express everything. Um, imagine, if you would, that you uh, are giving a recital and you have to have your back to the audience. If you are singing in an opera performance and yet the audience is behind you, they can't see your face, they can't see your hand gestures, would they still get the meaning of, of your character and your character's journey and the um, emotional content of where you are. I think you're on a broadcast or you're doing a studio recording or something like that and you say, am I making everything clear with the voice and all the tools that I have in my arsenal of singing? And I think that's vocally a place to start in the idea of expression. First thing to do, you want to look at the articulations that the composer has given you. Um, the sun is coming out right now. <laughs> I picked a bad spot to do this, but it's so beautiful, I want to stay. So, if I don't get totally blinded. Um, you look here. Da tu ti abbandona. Gives us an uh, accent there. In preda rio. Now, this is interesting. Wait, wait, wait. Ya ta ta pi pam pam pam. And it's all under one slur. Huh. Okay, so what does that mean and how do we interpret that? Um, for me, I look at this and I say, okay, he's given us this articulation. He's given us um, these very specific accents on these words. And I say, okay, what is, the, first of all, I study that vocally and I study it coldly so that my voice knows exactly what it's doing. And it's not going to get thrown in any curveballs. It just actually sits there and goes, okay, accent, swell the breath, ah, vowel, this, and I, and I do that very coldly. I do the same thing for coloratura passages. I want to make sure that my brain knows exactly where the music's going. I want to be able to sing them at different tempi. I want to sing, be able to sing them loud, soft. I want to be able to mess up the rhythm and dot the rhythm or do it as triplets rather than sixteenth notes, and I want to constantly be, be throwing my voice curveballs so that it responds and remains flexible. So that kind of work is done in the studio, and it's very specific. It's very, um, it's 
it's like it's like doing charney exercises if you're a pianist you know it's the suzuki method it's cold it's technical um, i don't think it's boring but it's just technical work that you have to do but once that's in there and the language is in there and and um, the phrasing i'm going to go back and i'm going to say she's talking to lester at this point and she's saying you know um, everybody has I've been abandoned to everything. I'm completely alone. I'm oppressed. I'm desolate. You know, things are not looking good at this moment. Um, but she has this long line. You have two double consonants on the tutti and abandonata. That's a very expressive device right there. And you spend a little bit of time on those double consonants and you get the sensation under the arc of a legato that she's almost holding back the tears. Okay? First accent. Wait, it's backwards. It gives a real swell there so that, that you, you sense this. It's very hard for her to say this. And uh, it's, um, it's very hard for her to articulate these words. And we go on in. And it's just, she's holding her back, herself back from crying, she's um, suppressing anger, she's um, timid about saying this. There's a lot of different choices to make, and as I'm rehearsing this, I'm going to go through and I'm going to try it one time where she's embarrassed. I'm going to go through one time where she's angry. I'm going to go through another time where uh, she's just simply sad. Um, there's a lot of different choices there for me to make and what I want to do is I want to swing the pendulum back and forth as an actress and I want to say where do I think this is going where do I think this is going to settle the really important thing to remember is that once you've done that technical work as a singer you want to actually feel that this music has not been written that you have not studied it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and sung through it you know hundreds of times that it's the first time that you're articulating not only the word but the phrase so she's not just saying abandon, uh, um, uh, dolore. She's not just going, io sento dolore. She's saying, preda rio dolore. Okay? You get the understanding of choosing that word, dolore, choosing where the direction of the line goes, choosing how long it's held, choosing whether there's an accent or not. All these choices have been determined by the composer, and we're doing simply what's written but as a performer as an artist you're sitting there and you're saying how do I feel I have to express it in this way I don't know how I feel maybe it comes out this way maybe it comes out that way so you actually put yourself in the business of choosing which word comes out of your mouth I could I could choose dolore I could choose tristezza but I choose dolore better vowels to sing on but <laughs> that's beside the point so, but, but what you want is when you're actually in that moment of auditioning, of performing, of recording, of recitaling, whatever it is that you're doing, that you've done so much preparation that you're free to choose the word and to choose the phrasing. It's the exact same thing for the coloratura. You know, you think, okay, I got, I've got 18 measures of 16th notes. Ah, what do I do? You want to, first of all, you want to understand very much the emotional context of which you are singing in and you want to have done all your technical work again so that you can sing it under any circumstance but then you're thinking why do I need to elongate this word why do I need to expand on the word joyir why do I need to expand on the word dolore um, because words aren't enough the word you know I'm happy isn't the same as I'm happy <laughs> okay don't quote me on that. <laughs> but, you know, if this is the whole reason that we sing, is to give greater depth of expression, to give greater depth of emotion. And so it's not just the word, but what is that emotional context? What's the subcontext of what I'm, I'm singing? Why do I need to express it in this way? And you have to make up a story. You have to create one. You take the text, you take the libretto, you take the historical context, if there is one, you take the harmonic context that's happening underneath you in the orchestra. Oh my gosh, that gives you so much information, what's happening in the orchestra. Not always with Donizetti, but he gives you a lot. Um, so you put it, all those pieces of the puzzle together, and then you choose. 
what it is you want to express. Sometimes it's the obvious choice, sometimes it's not. Um, until that technical work is done, you won't be as free as you want to be to express what you can. So do, make sure that, that that voice is there responding and it's in your control, that it, it knows where it's going. And then play. Just play. Imagine that you've got a set of finger paints and you have a canvas that is the size of the proscenium in the hall and you get to splatter your, your paints all over it. It's paints of emotion, paints of color, paints of text, articulation, all this, all this um, great stuff that we have at our disposal as musicians and instrumentalists and vocalists. Um, I hope that makes sense. I just blah, 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 blah on these um, uh, vlogs. There's so much information to give, but I hope that's somewhat concise. Um, do your homework so that technically you know exactly where you are. Do your homework in, in terms of, of the character and the emotional story that you're telling and the emotional subtext that is going on. And then remember that you have to choose the note you have to choose the text, you have to choose the syllable, you have to choose the articulation, and then all of a sudden, you're expressing something for the first time. And that's what we want. Wish me luck on Stuart. Oh my God, it's a hard role. But if I can stay in the moment and, you know, stay there, same thing for you and your Vivaldi, um, or, you know, all these coloratura things, get in the groove of that moment, don't worry about what's coming or what just went, and it sort of just ride the... Ride the expression train. Woo! <laughs> That's it. I think the sun is getting ready now to like go behind a cloud. I'm looking at all of Houston out there. It's awesome. I wish you guys the best. Thanks for your patience and understanding. I can't do these as much as I would like to, but I do them when I can. I'll, I'll shut up. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.